So this one is a little bit of a different one. Uh, since most of you know I do streaming for games and stuff like that and now with ISPO being online because thanks to the pandemic we can't exactly go there and I usually go there every year to check out the latest and greatest gear, all the new innovations, talk to my sponsors and stuff like that. So this year is a little different. I figured that since I will be doing my journalistic duty also, but this time only online, I figured I could share that with everybody who would be watching. So uh, for this, uh, I figured since it's going to be five days, it would take like 15 to 20 minutes every day and maybe go through a few companies that might be interesting, go through their products, tell you what I think about what I see, and at the end, maybe show you some of the stuff that I will be using next season, maybe already this season, some new stuff I learned and and uh, and share with you more of this kind of stuff. So uh, without further ado, uh, first of all, don't be scared about my uh, <laughs> graphics and animations. They're the same I used for my gaming setup because I didn't have the time to do them on the outdoorsy well way. Also, the setup is completely new, so I, <laughs> I didn't exactly... Uh, didn't exactly rehearse any of this. I basically just logged in into the page in the morning and checked it out. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a lowdown on how the whole ISPO fair thing works online. And then we're going to go into the whole thing and maybe check out two or three brands. And at the end, I will show you a piece of gear that I will going to be using now and before I've been using for a while. Maybe tell you about it a bit more in detail. And uh, we'll repeat the same thing every day after day for the coming week as long as this goes on. Because, you know, everybody who's been to that fair knows we're going to miss the parties, we're going to miss seeing the people. And I still wanted to give you some of these impressions that we from who participate in all these outdoor sports and who like to geek on all these gadgets and gear and everything uh, bring to the table. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so Oops, that's the wrong page Okay, inspo here we go So as most of you know the ISPO is the biggest outdoor sports fair in the world it used to be take place at the Munich Convention Center for three to four days usually reserved for uh, only for the professional sports community, uh, resellers, innovators and everything. There were also open days where you could buy tickets and go look at them. You can also buy tickets for the virtual version now. Every day on the page of the Instagram of, of the ISPO, the more important things, which I think are the key and crown of the fair next to all the products and all the innovations that are shown, are the conferences where all of the interesting uh, things that are developing uh, in the uh, outdoor and sports world are going on. Uh, a special focus this year is on sport that together makes us stronger. Every day they also have a live clip, which unfortunately is not available anymore. Today's speaker was Kylian Jornet. I don't know if they're going to make these available for anybody uh, to re-watch later. Um, they also had a few keynotes with gore and everything. Basically, there is a whole program for for this every day for a few hours. You, you can participate. They're called the public streams. And, well, there's a program. For example, we today we have Pete Kroshenko or Kilian Jornet. There was a movie, a Facebook event. Tomorrow we'll have eSports. Well, that's interesting, eSports. <laughs> Yeah, but only FIFA and shit like that. Walk right. Rocket League. Okay, maybe a Rocket League match. <laughs> no Destiny. <laughs> I stream Destiny, by the way. Go watch Destiny. Destiny's cool. <laughs> Title for the win. So, uh, without further ado, uh, not losing too much time, let's go check out some of the brands. So, this is the ISPO Online, and as you can see in my messaging, I already got a few brand messages. One is from West Kiteboarding. Do you do kiteboarding? I do not do kiteboarding. And one is from Kestle Ski. Since I'm more of a winter person, I think the first thing we are going to do is go check out maybe this ski brand that wrote me. I don't remember visiting West Kiteboarding. Maybe on the last ISPO. Yeah, maybe I did it on the last ISPO. Uh, that's interesting. 
Maybe Kessler is part of West kiteboarding? I don't know. Okay, uh, let's check it out. So let's go to Kessler, Kessler brand, and look at their brand stands. So they seem to have a few new products. Aha, uh -huh. the daily presentations with a Q&A on Zoom calls. Oh, that's interesting. I wish I had the time. Unfortunately, at that time, I have to be at work. And the world premiere of the new Kessler RX-12. What is the Kessler RX-12? Let's see. Cause, effect, start, finish, training, competition, technology, advantage, every tenth of a second, the work of thousands of hours. God, who thinks of these hashtags? Fast as ever. Uh, I wonder which marketing company did this. Well, judging from the flashy logo, this is a new Alpine ski. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ski equipment. Where's their products? Showroom. Ah, here we have the showrooms. So the uh, they we seem to also have a few free ride skis. Okay. Okay, the FX models are built for the ultimate free ride experience with 3D ship, triple wood core, titanal inlays. So it's a basic titanal construction. Mm -hmm. Stability, power transmission, blah, blah, blah. So interesting. Okay, so this is the Griffin Post Pro model. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. You can see the construction here, Paluvia wood core. So basically it's very similar to the other ski I have there. Uh -huh. so probably go for wouldn't go for for the 98 but I'd probably go for the 96 version seems to be a versatile ski weights oh, interesting the weight is 1.85 it's not that light I would reckon that a ski like that would be maybe around 1.5 like the Salomon Mountain Lab my f that's around 1.5 but I figure a bit more weight is a good thing it probably has better dampening characteristics reinforced with titanol okay so we're still reinforcing everything with titanol or basalt or some other material next to the wood core then they also seem to have a tour series. Okay, so what does the tour do? The TX models. Now they have an interesting in simple naming scheme. TX for tour, ZX for free ride, and FX for free ride. So what's the difference between ZX and FX? Sturdy free ride slayers are built for performance in the backcountry. Okay, so this is the ripper. This is the one you would take to your park powder day or to heli skiing somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Aha, uh -huh. so they reckon there is comfort, sports, advanced, and the race. Pff, okay, that's interesting. Uh, marketing buzzwords about technology, endless marketing buzzwords about technology. Holotech 2. Oh, probably means it's light, I guess. It's, it is relatively not that heavy for a big powder slayer ski. I'd reckon mine is about 2.5, I think. It's a bit of a weight saving. I've heard good things about the Kessler skis. The guys at Car Krippenstein all slag Kessler and they love it. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to ra run on these ever before or test them in any kind of scenario. So I wouldn't know if they're good, but the pictures sure are nice. Yeah, you can drop on them. Imagine that. Oh God, the pictures are over depth of field. It what do you think about the graphics? Oh, by the way, one more thing before I forget. Like, if you are interested in check for me to check out some company, just write it in my Discord, which you can find up in the corner. I will check it from time to time on the stream. Let's see if there's anything. Yeah, it's called Discord Game Lobby from that, but okay i had this some old stuff like write it in here and i'll check it from time to time to see if uh anybody has any questions okay so the next thing let's get back to it the next thing i wanted to check out maybe kessler seems to have a nice new set of free ride 
the what is the all mountain tx up what is that is that an ultralight ski i presume the tx up models with their durable and sturdy construction are optimized for your first touring experiences as well as rental business aha uh -huh. so we all do the rental business thing now so it's different the idea of your first touring experience they are very light 1393 oh that's a odd choice yeah yeah they wait it's okay still feel in all condition stable feel in all conditions so fiberglass for the stab stability i guess the Peluvia wood core semi cap sandwiched sidewalls so that's a little more durable burst protection top foil brushed protection top foil okay interesting so yeah, so you can go in with the trend for next year where Corona is over and the lifts are working again. So rental businesses can stock up on these two just in case we get closed down again. Also, Kessler seems to be doing climbing skins now. Okay, Kessler skins have perfect gliding and performance. Made from 70% mohair and 30% synthetic fiber materials. They're durable and designed for frequent use. I wonder if they make them make these themselves or if they're like from Pomoka or some other vendor, G3 or Cola. I don't know. I've seen this before somewhere. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Okay, so that is Kessler. Let's go back home check the messages and maybe switch to west kiteboarding what is west kiteboarding ah i think that's isn't that a magnetic kiteboard thing yeah i think it is Ah, oh, shit. Okay, sound is back. <laughs> oh, great. I messed that up. So you can watch me, uh, watch me talk and not say a thing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's always what happens when you start things for the first time. So, yeah. Okay. So, maybe... Maybe, uh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll go through the ISPO brand news tomorrow. And for today, I think that's going to be it. Because you probably weren't able to hear anything for the last, um, how long has this been running? 20 minutes. So audio problem here, unfortunately. And well, we'll be back tomorrow with less audio problems, I hope. Before I go, there's one more thing though that I want to share with you guys and that will be to show you a little bit of one of the products that I uh, wanted to, uh, to, to, to show you because it's one of the things I will be using this season more often and let's, let's take it to the camera 2 position and I will tell you all about it. Okay, so before we finish for today, uh, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and it's a pair of skis. We were going through the Kessler skis earlier, and I told you guys that maybe for some uh, touring that you want to do, or for something, it's fine to have a ski that is good to ski and also good to hike up on. And it's always a bad, a very hard balance to find. Now, when all the movement with the light skis started two years ago, I was still with Salmon. I used to use this ski, in fact, to this day, I still use this ski. Yeah. It's the Mountain Explorer 95, and it's been on the market for a few years now, 
basically wasn't changed much. I think Salomon's changing something this year. I saw a few pictures of the new skis, and I wasn't exactly sure what they're going, what, what the, the deal is, if it's light, skiable, blah, blah. But this is a ski from the beginning of the whole Titanal insert thing era. It is relatively light, and it is good on the uphill, and it is relatively okay on the downhill. Now, don't expect any proper downhill performance with this bugger. You can still charge it hard though, trust me, you can. But if there's more than 20 centimeters of fresh bow, it's gonna bug you. So to change that problem, this ski had some time. Switched to Jitter stuff, which supports me with the skis now. I will be using this baby. And this baby is the Dinostar Tour 95, 99. Um, the use scenario here is a bit different than from the Salomon. You see, the Salomon was all the rage when back was all the rage. You wanted to go into the backcountry, go explore, and ski something. Now this goes into a different direction. This is basically almost as light, maybe 200 grams. I think it's 200 grams more uh, weight than the other one. It has a full wood core construction with PU and is reinforced with it's called a hybrid core with basalt fibers. Also, it's awesome on the bottom side because you can see the logo. This looks really good on pictures, you know. Awesome. And this baby will be the replacement for the Salmon for the forthcoming future. Uh, I'm only still waiting for the findings, which should have arrived a month ago or two weeks ago. I don't remember. Well, you know how the supply situation is right now in the outdoor industry. We're missing everything and the productions are not going as planned. But I hope that before the end of the season, I will be able to take these babies for a spin and tell you more about them. And with that, I will finish today's stream and say, have a good one. More ISPO tomorrow, hopefully without audio issues. Bye.